Welcome back. In this step, let's look at pom.xml. If you have imported the project fine, then you would see a pom.xml right at the bottom in the package explorer. So if you double click and open it up, then you would be able to see the pom.xml of this specific generated project. You can see about, I mean, this is quite a considerable file, about 85, 88 lines of code. What is POM.xml? POM stands for Project Object Model. So P-O-M here, it stands for Project Object Model. What does that really mean? POM is where you define all the configuration for a Maven project. Some of the things you have defined in here are group ID, artifact ID. If you remember, we gave a group ID and artifact ID in here. That's exact, exactly what is copied in here. Artifact ID is the name that we are giving to this specific project. The group ID and the artifact ID are very important because if some other project wants to use this, then they would need to specify the group ID and the artifact ID of this specific project. For example, if I'm developing a framework and I want to use the framework somewhere else, I would just need to use this group ID and artifact ID so that I can use code from this specific project. The other important thing which is present in here is the version. So here we are having snapshot. Snapshot indicates that this is a version under development. So I'm still working on coding this specific thing. So that's why it's 0.0.1 snapshot. You'd see a lot of projects when you create for the first time, get a version of 0.0.1 .0 snapshot because it indicates that this is a project under development. Packaging indicates how you would want to package the output of this specific project. We are developing a Java project, so we are putting it as a jar. The packaging can be jar or var or an EAR. So var is a web archive. When you develop web applications, use a var. EAR is an enterprise archive. So an EAR can contain multiple var files. Here we are defining what is the kind of project that we are doing. So here I'm saying it's a Java application. The other thing is the name we are giving to the project and the description of the project. If you go a little below, you'd see something called a parent. Just like Java classes, even your POM files can inherit from a parent. So you'd see that this specific POM file is inheriting from a Spring Boot startup parent. So if I do a control and click over it or a command and click over it, you would be able to open that parent up as well. So you'd see that there's a lot of things which are present in here. We don't really need to worry about it right now. But the thing which you need to understand is that we are inheriting a lot of things from the startup parent which is present in here. The other thing which is present in the pom.xml are different properties. One of the important property is java.version. We are using java8. The version is specified in here. The most important things that are present in a pom.xml are what are called the dependencies. If, if I want to develop a web application with Spring MVC, then I would need Spring MVC. I would need Spring Framework. I would need a lot of other things. These are all called dependencies. In the pom.xml, you specify all the things that you would need to develop your project. So in this project, in this web application, I would want to use Spring Boot Startup Web. So that's one of the dependencies that we are added, adding in here. I'll show you some magic right now for you to be able to understand the whole thing. I'm expanding Maven dependencies. So you'd see that there are a lot of Maven dependencies which are coming in, in here. However, here I'm only specifying two things. So there are only two things which are specified in here, but there are hundreds of dependencies which are coming in into this project. How is it possible? Keep that question in the back of your mind. Let's now remove these dependencies. So I'm removing these dependencies out and saving the file. You can see now that the project would rebuild. It's building the project again. And you would see that the entire Maven dependencies thing has disappeared because there are no dependencies that are declared for this project. I'm doing an undoing the change and I'm saving it back again. Now you would see that Maven dependencies would reappear. Let's now play with it a little more. So I'll actually remove one of these, Spring Boot Startup Web. I'm removing Spring Boot Startup Web. That's the only thing I'm removing. You can focus on these dependencies, Spring Web, Spring AOP, Spring Beans, Spring Pontex, Spring WebMC, and the Jackson ones also here. 
you would actually see that when I remove it, when I remove this dependency out here, a lot of these dependencies would also disappear. So it's building the workspace still. And you can see that a lot of those dependencies have now disappeared. Let's slowly understand all this stuff. The dependency that we have here is Spring Boot Starter Web. So this is one of the dependencies that we have declared in our project. So now if I do a command and hover over there, then you would get an option to open the pom.xml for Spring Boot Starter Web. So just go there. So all that I needed to do was do a control and hover over there or a command and hover over there and click open pom.xml. Once you go there, you can actually click the pom.xml to see the dependencies of that specific pom. So you can see now that that specific pom is also having a lot of dependencies. You'd see that Hibernate Validator is a dependency, Spring Web is a dependency, Spring Web MVC is a dependency, Spring Boot Starter Tomcat is a web dependency. We took our dependency and this dependency has other dependencies. And if you open up this one, Spring Boot Starter, you'd see that it declares its own dependencies as well. If you open up Spring Boot Starter, you'd see that it has a dependencies as well. So it has a dependency on Spring Boot, Auto Configure, Logging, Spring Core and all other stuff. So that's how we get a lot of dependencies when we just add in one small dependency. That's the reason why we get a lot of dependencies when we just add in one dependency. These dependencies are called transitive dependencies. So in Maven, we manage all our dependencies. What are the different things that our project is using? Those are all managed in the pom.xml. Each dependency has a group ID artifact ID and you can also specify a version for that specific dependency. The last important thing that you would also see in the pom.xml is configuration of the repositories. In this specific project we are actually using a few snapshots. That's why we have actually configured a snapshot repositories. Those are few of the important things that you would define in your pom.xml. So pom.xml is basically project object model. It contains the definition of your Maven project. It contains what is the name of your project? How would other projects be able to use your project? The second thing you would describe in your pom.xml is the dependencies. What are the things that you would need to be able to run your project. Those are the things that you would define in your pond.xml. Until the next step, bye-bye.